Welcome to a separate episode of Robo's Basketball Podcast this week. We decided to put the standings episode standalone just so you don't get stuck in a long two-hour time loop. So here that is now with myself and Mike Brokio. Let's get into our Eastern Conference standing predictions, bro. Uh, I think the top half of these, to me, were easier than the bottom half. I don't know how you went, but some of these some of these bottom bottom half teams are hard to know where they're at are they full tank are they half are they you know all, all that kind of stuff i, I thought the the, the the top half was easier well because i think you know obviously we started with victor but um this is be if you take victor out of it this is probably one of the biggest blatant tank years for, cooper, for right? both divisions to get cooper flag yeah. or there's another there's, like, there's another kid at rutgers is pretty good i think bailey his name is but I mean, I'm a I'm all Cooper Flag all day, and I think you're gonna see a lot of these teams that you like. Well, I don't think any team should half tank. I think if you're you're either in it, unless you have injury issues and and you ha- you're forced into the tank. But um, but there's a few tank you know, teams it, like I think be, Brooklyn has none of its picks, right? Is it Brooklyn? yeah, like bro- like Brooklyn, and then the West Coast, the Western Conference is crazy. Now that Oklahoma City has all of the Clippers picks, <laughs> yeah, and, and they're gonna now be bad. With the Clippers injury issues. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll talk about it in the West Coast next week, but that that is a very interesting phenomenon down there where, you know, it reminds me of the Detroit Pistons when they had the Darko draft when they win the championship and they got that pick Wild. for, yeah, I yeah. think it was, um, yeah, Theo Ratliff or something like that where, you know, where Memphis got Theo Ratliff and they got they got Memphis's pick. So it's crazy that o- Oklahoma City with the team they have have a chance to get another lottery pick to throw on that. Yeah, no doubt. Number one, I think we both got Boston. You'd have Boston, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think what I like about them, obviously the championship coming off that, people talk about championship hangover. But I don't see that with this team. I, I think they're deep enough. Even what I like about this roster, they're deep enough to sustain an injury or two. Um, that's what I really like. They can they can afford to have a Tatum or a Brown out for stretches and still be very, very competitive and win games. Uh, I think they'll not coast to the one seed, but I think it's – I think it's theirs uh, to lose by far. Um, pretty much the same roster they're bringing back, pro, and 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 it's probably one of the rare occurrences of of seeing all players return to a championship built roster. Like we don't really see that anymore. Um, we haven't seen it a lot in the past, at least lately, just because guys get poached, guys get get paid by teams. You know, we saw it with KCP with the Lakers and and, and going over to Denver. We saw it with different guys. Um, and it's just nice to see them bring it all back, albeit at a, at a huge cost. I mean, they're going to be one of the that they already are top five in salary, and I think next season gets even worse for them. But you got to you got to ride that winning wave, and I like the fact that they've put all their chips to the table and said we're going to bring back what's what's won us a championship. We're not going to try to be, you know, the old Mark Cuban back in the day when I'm going to be a, a, a genius after we won our championship and try to save a bit of money here and there. And then we all know what happened to Dallas after that. They haven't even been close since. Um, so I like I like teams that do this. It's a risk. Uh, you are spending a lot of money in Boston, infamously the, the the commentary around the fact that they're they're barely breaking even on their year to year because of this because of their salary cap and their and their roster um, rings true. But you're winning, um, and I think you, it's commendable that they've done that, bro. But they're they're a clear one in the East right now. Yeah, I I really don't see any team really competing with that, especially with the a little bit of the early injury bug. Not that it's a big deal with Philadelphia what they're going through and even with New York or what they're going through. So um, I think when you have everybody back like this, did you read with Boston, with Lonnie Walker, they had to cut him. You know, they, they signed him to an Exhibit 10. They had to cut him. His $2 million salary would have cost him 10 <laughs> in, in their luxury tax deal, their eight, that their tax apron that they're in. But, yeah, I mean, look, they have everybody back. Um, at, everyone's on the same page. They're 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 really built to win multiple championships after this past championship. Uh, the way their team's built, the way they they just sort of get along. Now, obviously, they're going to have to make some roster adjustments in the next year or two with Horford getting older and you know some backup spots. But I mean, they're one through five plus their bench is is together. They they have shooting, they have athleticism, um, they have basketball IQ. The ball moves. They're you know they they throw all the different lineups around you. Um, you know, I I thought they were. You know, they're really effective. 58 wins, uh, FanDuel has them you know, over-under. I have them at like 61. 
I think they're going to be really good. I don't think they're going to be any type of a 70-win team, but I think they're going to be really good, especially with teams resting guys these days. You don't really know win-wise what teams are going to do, but I, I, I think that number one seed is pretty locked up, you know, barring a big-time injury or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, to your point about the wins, I try to stay away from win predictions for that very reason. There's just so much moving parts now in the NBA with, with – um rest and injuries and this and that and it's just you know i think i think Embiid's already come out and said he's not going to play back-to-backs or something along those lines yeah again um crazy which is wild when you're considering we'll get to them shortly but you know, considering paul george injury history as well um but yeah boston boston's a clear one and it's um you know even with you like you said injury i'm going to rely on that they, they can afford an injury <laughs> like it's their roster is mm-hmm. that deep there were questions around their bench early last season but i think now some of their bench players had really vital roles in the finals and the playoffs. I think when you come back for that second year, those guys are even better because they have a confidence about them now. They know their role. They're happy with it. They've, they've proven it on the biggest stage. So I don't see them losing that. Number two, who you got, Pro? Who's your two? Uh, two. The, the, I got the New York Knicks at two. Yeah, same. Um, do you want to talk about them, Bogues? I'll talk after you. Yeah. Uh, I think – look, I think – they're probably the off-season champs uh, as far as revamping their roster. I mean, um, I think Towns and Bridges essentially for well, – Bridges came late, but Towns and Bridges for DiVincenzo and Randall I think is, a, is an upgrade. Um, I think uh, – I just think they're a very dangerous team at the defensive end. I think the glaring weakness of that end now is, is Towns at the five, but I think they have some, some beef. Um, I think Robinson will need to be healthy for them to be – for them to go where they need to go. I think he's going to play some vital minutes at times. And look for Ariel Hockporty, uh former NBL next star. He, I think he's going to play some minutes early, bro. <clears throat> I think he's really going to going to solidify some of those role-playing minutes as a as just a really good role, lob guy, athletic, can protect the basket uh, with Robinson out injured early in the season again. You just don't know where he's going to be health-wise uh, coming into the season. You just hope that he's, he's ready um, sooner rather than later, but he's had an injury history. Uh, we're going to talk about Bridges changing his shot, though, don't we? I mean, uh, I, it's absolutely head scratching. I sent you the clip. I mean, he was a high 30 shooter at one point, he had a 40% season from three. And for those that haven't seen it, he's <clears throat> some reason changed his jumper to shoot kind of they're trying to say more KD ish above his head, and, and it, it just it's number one, not going in, which is kind of the important factor when you're shooting. And just does not look right. It just looks. I just don't understand why you would change it. What were you trying to go from forty to forty-five? Like you, you were a great three-point shooter that plays both ends, can get in the paint, and in the preseason it looks ugly, bro. Um, but that's that's a big, big thing for them because they need that three-point shooting around Brunson. He's going to be doubled a lot. Towns will probably be doubled at times. But but all in all, I, I like their roster revamp. Um, I think they've got a lot of toughness about them. They've got multi-positional guys. OG obviously, um, so I like I like where they're at. They're probably the biggest challenge to Boston in the East, um, and I think it would be a good playoff series. But I still think Boston's too strong. But but I do like the Knicks. I agree with you, Bogues. As far as what they did in the off season, I mean, they definitely sort of solidified some things. They they had such a great you know run in the playoffs uh, that was ended obviously because of injury. Now injury is going to be the 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 common occurrence here. If they could, they need to obviously, you know. Pump the brakes on it. Not that they have much control over it, but Mitchell Robinson being out early is going to be a big is going to be a big problem. I think with the with the Randall trade, I, I think DiVincenzo losing him is going to be huge, just because you know it gives that's a second unit guy that gives him scoring, gives him energy. They didn't really replace that. Um, they that's that's going to be a big issue for them. I think the big part. Look, you know, Carl Anthony Towns, Josh Hart could play. I, um, Anana B could play. I, I always mess his name up, but he could play some four. Uh, they're going to have some issues. You know, Jer- Jericho Sims is probably going to play a lot of five for them. Uh, they'll have issues on the back, you know, the backups, but as far as their starting five, their coaching, what they have, I, I think that they're obviously, I think they're solidified too. I think Philly, you know, Philly could give them a run for their money if they're, you know, if they, if they stay healthy, but I think that they're a solid two, you know, two seed. They're together. They play so well. They they got a lot of history together. Now the Bridges thing is interesting to me. Look, the average small forward in the NBA or wing player shoots about thirty seven percent from three. That's where he's at. He's like a 38 percent career three point shooter. When you go high like that and you go like 
you know, you go the KD route, you go the Kawhi Leonard route, you shoot a flatter ball. Now, look, if you're a 42, 43, 44% three-point shooter and you're a flat three-point shooter, that's fine. But when you're somebody who's continued, I mean, you read the article, you know, when, when the um, the quote about it, he said he's been trying to tweak his shot for like seven years or something like that, where, you know, you keep doing that and you shoot flat, that's going to give you some issues. And, and you know, it, it messes with your head a little bit. So I think it's going to be rough for him. He, I thought his game was great. You know, defensive guy, cutter, energy, can make shots, you know, just you know knows how to play. But you start you start tweaking that shot and it's not really where you need it and you start losing a little bit of confidence with it. it it's an interesting factor. And they need his shooting. Um, you know, him, Brunson, you know, OG, you know, all those guys, you know, you know, getting, you know, Carl Anthony Towns with his three-point shooting. But you lose his shooting and, and he starts getting to the tank a little bit with his shot making. It's going to be an interesting deal. And this is what, his sixth or seventh season, right? Like, it's like, why, is it? you know, he's not a young fella anymore um, to, to come in. I, I just don't understand it. The only guy, to your point about shooting above your head that gets it, gets an arc is Jokic. <laughs> he's the only guy I've ever seen yeah, yeah. that just gets that shit above his yeah. head and just sh- lollipops it, he, but... He actually brings it like back here, you know, and and, and yeah, tosses it up. With. up. Those guys are like, yeah. those guys are like this. When yeah. you're high like that, um, you know, uh, who was like that? Who who's the? Oh man, I'm getting old. Who's the who was the big guy for Portland Bogues? Um, that came out of uh, played a text. Marcus Aldridge. Oh yeah, he shot a flat like that over his head. When you shoot over your head like that and you get size. It's really hard to get any type of arc with that, and you're shooting a line drive, and it's fast. Like I said, if you're a great shooter, like a JJ Redick, you know Kawhi Leonard, you know after his first year, right after his first year, he was sort of into that. You know, when you're KD, when you're you know when you're JJ, when you're you know Kawhi, you can shoot flat like that. It doesn't really matter. So, um, it's it'll be an interesting phenomenon though this year for but sure. Yeah, I think him. one for ten or eleven in the preseason. So hopefully that doesn't that doesn't continue because they need him they need him to space the floor at that other end and, and obviously like you said DiVincenzo gone who shot the ball real well from three you bring in Bridges which is generally you look at as an upgrade plays both ends probably a little bit better than DiVincenzo all up as a player if he doesn't have that three point shooting like he has then then you got some issues so number three pro uh, who you got three real quick um, my third team just let me look at it real quick my third team is going to be the Orlando Magic. What? Of all people. Oh, you went for a flyer too. Yeah. I went for a flyer as well. I put, yeah. I put Indiana. Um, yeah. I'm going to go. So let's do Indiana and then we'll, we'll sure. do Orlando after you, uh, after that. Uh, mm-hmm. So Indiana, I had, I'm taking a gamble on it. Um, and the reason why D'Antoni era teams, these fast paced teams, they historically do very well in the regular season. That's the only reason I'm going for, and they're they're pay, mm-hmm. the pace they play at and the tempo. I mean, they had 150 regulation scores consistently last season. Consistently, not wasn't a, a one a month. Sure. Shit was like you look at the scores and it'd be like 156 to 148. You're like, oh, well, how many overtimes does that go? And none. <laughs> like, what the hell? So they they play a real fast tempo, and I think yeah. I think teams can get lulled into that, you know, because you're gonna have three guys score 30 on the opposing team and think, fuck, I'm feeling good. I've got 30. Like I don't usually score, you know, two of them are like, I'm in the twenties usually. I've got 30, mm-hmm. 35, but you're still down 10 because they've got 150 on you. So that's my reason. And, and they're bringing back very much of this, the same team that they had. Um, not a lot of changes. Um, and I just think that pace is just going to eat teams up. I, 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 so I'm going, I'm going for a fly with Indiana based on that, bro. What do you, what do you have on Indiana? Look, Indiana is, you know, Carlisle is probably one of the best offensive coaches in the game today. And, you know, he's always changing with the times. You know, he has those guys playing fast. He's got those guys bombing threes. The bench has an ultimate green light with that. And look, they did a lot of that last year without Matherin at the end of the year, you know, throughout the playoffs. You know, they didn't have him. And and they had a lot of success there. Um, I just think with Halliburton, Nemhar, you know, Naismith, Siakam, Turner, you know, that Siakam trade was big for them. They, you know, they, um, you know, at first they sort of was a little rocky with it, but, you know, they fit him, they fit him in pretty well. It'll be interesting what Wiseman does as backup center for them, but, you know, McConnell, you know, Matherin, Obi Toppin, it'll be interesting because Toppin had some pretty good play games in the playoffs too. 
look, they're going to score a lot of points defensively. They 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 need to definitely sharpen up. They were they were a joke defensively last year, in my opinion. But offensively, they they were killing it. And I think that you know with Halliburton at the you know if they could stay healthy, you know, and they took advantage of in the playoffs, especially with a lot of injury issues with opponents. If they could just sort of keep that injury bug, you know, to a minimum, I think that they're going to be they're going to be a really good team. It's just there's. The East is the East is much better, in my opinion, with with a you know a couple of teams making huge moves, and then some teams developing. They had some good talent last year and made some adjustments, you know, like the Orlando Magic. But um, I think that that I definitely think Indiana is going to be a, a pretty good contending team in the East. Where'd you have Indiana? I had Indiana Bogues at. Let me look. NBA standings. I had Indiana at. Five. I had Orlando and then Philly, and I had them at five. So um, I think they're going to be good. I, I think they're going to be really good. And and don't forget with Philly, what they you know, depending if they could stay healthy with the you know, with Paul George and and the guys that they have and you know sort of their union, I I just thought they were going to be a little bit ahead of the paces. But again, the pre the, the regular season such a cluster, you know, with, with with everything that happened. So you never really know with the rest and injuries and things like that. So. Um, I had them okay. at five. Um, and let's get let's get into Orlando then, and we'll kind of jump around a little bit. You had them at three. I got them at seven. Um, I think mm-hmm. an elite defensive team last season. My question is, I think they were second um, in defense last season, if I'm not wrong. But can they sustain that kind mm-hmm. of play on the defensive end? You could say yes. I mean, they're bringing in a KCP who's known as a good defender, another three point shooter. They're very well coached, uh, a, a young team. I feel like for a young team, they don't beat themselves too much, which is kind of rare. Usually young teams will beat themselves. Usually a well-drilled veteran team won't beat themselves. Um, they're kind of the, the opposite of that. So they'll, they'll win games, but I just don't think they – I still don't think they have enough talent to, 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 to get it done on a consistent basis. I think they'll grind out wins um, here and that – Banchero wants more more of an isolation type game has been interesting from some people in the know in Orlando that he he really he really wants to be a, an ISO guy and I, I just don't I don't think that's that's complementary of his game I think he's really good getting getting into stuff going downhill and putting his body into guys and all that kind of stuff so his growth obviously will be very important to, to where they go but why why do you have them at three? Well, Bogues, I, I really thought that last year they were really good and really young. That what really hurt them is their lack of shooting. Yeah, they just didn't have enough three point threats uh, to really space the floor out. You know, to give Bun. You know, I'm not a huge Bunchero fan, but he is a good player. He's physical. He's strong. He could score. You know, you got him. You got Wagner. You know, the problem is they're just not consistent three point shooters. In this day and age, you really need to be able to do that. Wagner shooting in the high twenties. You know, Bonchero, Bonchero shooting like 32% from three. It's really not going to cut it. You know, Suggs isn't a shooter. So that's the problem. Now, KCP, Gary Harris can shoot. The only issue, in my opinion, that's going to keep them from getting to that, you know, that three spot is shooting. It, it, they're going to need to be able to get better at that. Um, I really do like Anthony Black. I think Anthony Black was one of the better young players drafted in uh, two drafts ago, last year's draft. Uh, not this past year, but last year, I think he can make a really big impact. You got Cole Anthony. You got a good unit. They play together. They play, for, you know, for each other. You know, Wagner had a good summer in the in the Olympics, and you know, I, I'm a big fan of Wendell Carter if he could stay healthy. You know, Mo Wagner's good off the bench. They're just together. Obviously, you know, Jamal Mosley being a really good coach and, and really getting those guys together. But they guard people. They just the only thing that's going to be stopping them is their ability to make shots. If Anthony Black. Can you know can improve it as a three point shooter? If Wagner could show some type of progression, they're gonna need to be able to shoot. Suggs is one of the best defensive point guards in the game, so it'll be. I think they're gonna be young, energetic. They can get up and run. The problem is if they can make shots or not. You play a team like Indiana, and you know Indiana makes like you know fourteen threes at halftime, and you make four. It's gonna be you know put you at a big disadvantage. So those guys. You know, maybe they don't have enough shooting. And still, who knows? I think Gary Harris is going to have to play a lot. You know, with his ability to make shots, I think KCP is going to have to have a big role, probably a little bit bigger role than he had in Denver. So it'll be interesting to see. Interesting one. It's a flyer. So we've both got flyers at number three. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I think they're both arguably can be number three. Um, but yeah, I just think that uh, 
There's got to be some sort of surprises. We can't just go the the standard Boston, New York, Philly, Milwaukee, Cleveland. You know, that's what everyone's going to go with. Um, we're very similar to that. Yep. But I just, I just thought, yeah, I thought I'd have to fly at that one. Four. Um, I had Philly at four. You as well, yeah, right? right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I had Philly there based on – it's just the health question. Uh, I think if you guaranteed health on the Philly roster, I'd probably have them too. I'd have them over New York probably. If, if you guarantee that Embiid's going to play 85, 80% of the games, Maxi's obviously going to be healthy and continue to, 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 to go up, and um, Paul George is healthy, which mm-hmm. he already isn't, you'd be like, okay, like I think they're an, they probably they probably get over – um, New York, and they probably you could probably even argue win the off season. Uh, I think they've had a very good off season, but it's a health thing that you just can't you just can't trust that they're going to be completely healthy. Um, and some of it's just freak luck, some of it's not. Some of it's you know, beads on record uh, already this off season is not playing back to backs. I saw KG lose his absolute mind on his show. <laughs> I'm saying just look, you can look it up yourself. And it's it's a fair enough gripe, you know. Um, but. That's why I can't. I, I just can't pick Philly to be any higher um, until I see some health from them. They're, they're very guard he- heavy too, pro. So I don't know. I don't know if we see a move from them. Um, they make a move at some point in the season. But Maxi Ubre Jr., Eric Gordon, Kyle Lowry, Reggie Jackson, and the and the nail painting Jared McCain. Um, so you got you got six guys that you know he's a he's a tw- he's a twentieth pick, correct? Uh, Mc- McCain. So yeah, he's a high you know, pick. There's not a lot of minutes for his development either. So I'd assume. At some point, his agent's going to come knocking and say, you know, if he's playing behind Reggie Jackson and Kyle Lowry and even potentially Eric Gordon, um, what's going on, you know? And I might need to move one of those guys out to give him some minutes, especially if they're 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 floating and, and not dominating these. They're just kind of in the mix. They'll, that'll that'll be interesting how that goes. An underrated signing by them though, Pro Yabuselli, uh from from uh, the mm-hmm. French from from Europe. I just like him because if you followed him in the Euro League. Just a great Euro performer, and he doesn't need the ball. Uh, he's he's happy to play without the ball. Strong physical body brings toughness at both ends, and and his three balls much improved. So that was kind of a, a quiet, underrated pickup for for, for them. Um, and I think it's something that they've needed with 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 the likes of Embiid and Maxi and really ball heavy guys. They need a guy that's okay to lock down at the defensive end and just got run around and hit people. And that's that's what he does. He infam- infamously. Uh, Almost lifted the spine out of Dante Exum a couple of years ago uh, in that in that Euroleague final. He was a guy that, that, that snuck up behind yeah. him and, and and kind of put him in that chokehold, which is wild. Uh, but just a huge, huge body for them. So I like that pickup, bro. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I think that the whole back to back thing right now, you know, I love how the media just takes sound bites and just runs with them. You never know. Like, you know, they might they might be tiptoeing around it early and then, you know. They, they sort of up minutes by the end of the year just to make sure that they're going in the right direction. But you're right. They're, they're going to live and die by their injuries. Um, you know, having that Maxi George, and B, you know, sort of, you know, three-headed monster, right? I mean, they're, they're going to score points. They're going to do things. It's going to be hard to guard because you can't really center in on one guy because they'll just move the ball over to it. Um, you know, they're, they're really top five heavy. But then, you know, Daryl Morey, it's it just sort of a, a – it's a roster sort of how he likes it. Three-point shooting, guys who could switch, guys who could play multiple positions. The Eric Gordon, Oubre. Um, I don't think they're going to really worry about Jared McCain all that much. I mean, I know he's a high pick, but he's not. it's not like you got Victor there or someone like that where you need to play him. You don't need to play him right now. They'll find games. There's going to be plenty of times that Eric Gordon comes up with a, a sore hamstring or something like that. Lowry, same thing. There's going to be minutes for him. Um, but I, I think that Look, they got three point shooting. They've got talent. They've got size. Andre Drummond's going to be big coming off the bench for them. You know, averaging eight and nine last year. You know, he's a rebounding machine. So it, it'll be an interesting. You know, Maxi's development and how he's sort of taken his game year in and year out. Um, Lowry, just a, a seasoned veteran that's been around. You know, been in championship situations. So, um, yeah, I think they're going to be good. It, it's just hard to say. Well, they're going to challenge for the East. You just can't challenge from the East with guys that has had injuries like that. And if Paul, Paul George is, you know, if he starts having injury issues as well, that's going to be a big, big problem. But Embiid, you just got to keep your eye on because he's never really healthy. Um, you know, in some, some of it's his fault, some of it's not, but you can never, you just can't really count on him, you know, to be healthy, you know, to play a 70 game season. It's just um, with, with all the, with all the issues, you just never know. I agree. I agree. Hopefully they stay healthy and can really knock on the door 
uh, of the East and make it interesting that top four. But they got, they got to prove that to to kind of get a higher a higher pick in my my book. Uh, number five, who who you got at five? Bogues, I've got the Indiana Pacers at five. Okay, so we've yeah, done. We them, talked about so Indiana. We'll talk about them. I've got mm-hmm. Cleveland. Um, I, I did some reading on this for the East East Conference standings and, and and read a bunch of different experts that put the, some people had the Cleveland as high as two and three, um, which was head scratching to me. I, I just something about them I just cannot take seriously. I think Kenny will do. Kenny's there now, right? Um, Kenny Atkinson, Atkinson, yeah, yeah Kenny Atkinson. I, I think he'll do a good job early. I, I worry about his hard nosed ways uh, with this group. They got a relatively young group of. Stars. I mean, Donovan Mitchell, would you say superstar? You can debate it. But they've got guys that are knocking on that door of being stars. And I just don't know how hard-nosed coaches do in the NBA these days with those kind of rosters. Um, you know, they weren't totally healthy last season. And I think that worked in a way. I think a full roster pro, do you have enough basketballs for this team? Um, they have a lot of ball-heavy guards. Uh, Mitchell, Garland. Revert. Garland, Mitchell, and Revert yeah. are, you, are just – Pounders, right? They're they're, they're mm-hmm. you know they're pounding the shit out of the rock and, and and making things happen. But how does that play? Uh, I thought Mobley was was better at the five last season when Allen got hurt. I think he played much better at the five spot just because the, it created a bit of a mismatch. He's he's loses a bit of strength, but then counters that at the other end offensively by by his movement and being able to go downhill. And it was that game in the Boston series that he did really really well. Um, how that works now with a with a healthy Jared Allen, not sure. I just don't know if he's a long term solution at at mass minutes at the four because he just can't shoot the ball that well from three. You, you have length, you have size, you have all that, but they're gonna have to play some interesting lineups at times. Um, they don't have, I mean, Georges and Yang's probably their best the best shooter that can slide to a big spot. Uh, Dean Wade as well can play some some minutes, but they don't really have a five mm-hmm. that can stretch the floor, um, mm-hmm. and that's kind of frowned upon in today's NBA. So you, you probably need one, but. Yeah, I'm. I'm just not sure. I'm not sold on this on this roster and how it's being put together. It just seems like something's missing. I can't put my finger on what. I just I'm just not sold on it. On them being a a dominant power in the East. I think they'll be they'll be okay. They'll be good. They'll they'll have their they'll have a five game win streak. They'll have a three game losing streak. They've got they've got size and length. Um, I think the honeymoon period with Kenny will be okay the first season potentially, but I just worry about that as well. Hopefully he's tweaked a little bit. From what I understand, all coaches say they have, but. You know, when when they when they're on a five game lose streak, the the media fires up and, and he has to lay into some guys. My question is, how do those young guys respond? Yeah, those grinders, those guys who grind it out, they never they never sort of stop doing what they're doing. That just uh, we used to call them Eastern coaches. You know, those tough you know tough hard nosed guys that want to fight you. You know, twenty four seven. I think Kenny's a great coach. I think he's you know he's no nonsense. He knows what he's doing. He's well prepared. I think he's going to be good. Now, Donovan Mitchell played for Patino uh, early, you know, in, in college. He, he's had some, he's had some coaches and things along the way. I, I don't think he's going to be a problem. Garland might sort of see that a little different than some of the other guys. I think he had Jared Allen in, in Brooklyn when Jared was at Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. But and, and Levert as well. But um, yeah, it's an interesting group, Bogues. I think in today's NBA, you know, everybody thinks that all the bigs need to shoot. I, I think all bigs need to have. Um, the ability to take you from the perimeter on straight line drives and be able to like just move the ball. If you can't shoot the ball, you got to continuously drive it and and you know force defenders to suck in on you and then make plays for other people. So I think Mobley sort of has that perimeter game that he can do that. I think if, if you know you can't just play these two bigs in the dunker spot and and, and around the basket because it's just going to mess your spacing up. But if you could you know put Mobley on the perimeter, you, you see some of these guys like. Walker Kessler, they did it in Utah. Um, you know, some of these bigs that can't shoot, they just sort of space them out and drive them. You're seeing that with Memphis with Zach Eady too. So um, they're interesting. Um, I see, you know, I saw the win total that that, you know, that they had for him in, um, in FanDuel and things like that. They expect big things from him. I think that this is a comfortable spot for them. Uh, they're going to have some, look, they're going to have injury issues. Like, you know, they're going to have guys banged up just like they do every year. But um, it's hard to forecast that. But, um, you know, Garland and Mitchell is going to have to coexist. And, you know, look, the lack of shooting in Mobley and Allen, is that going to really hurt you? Struess is a solid player. Um, I, I do like their second unit with Laverde and Okoro and, and, you know, Georges Yang. So they're an interesting group. They, you know, they're, I think they got some toughness there. If Mitchell could be consistent, you know, and, and find ways to be just efficient as a player, 
you know, and just continue to be, you know, the franchise player they think he could be, they'll, they'll be okay. I, I think that if they're healthy coming into the playoffs and everybody's together on things, they might be able to win a game or so in, in, in the playoffs. But for now, I think that five seed's a, a pretty solid spot. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with you. Ho- hopefully they prove us wrong. It is a fresh coach. Might be a new system. Might be a new style of play. Uh, but I just, I just, and I think the east, the top end is pretty heavy. So that'll be um, interesting to see how they go. Number six, who you got? I had Cleveland at six. Okay, so we'll flip flop those. I had I had Milwaukee at six. Um, mm-hmm. I think look for a better season from Dane. Uh, I think he wasn't horrible. To, like he had that stretch, but then he ended up coming good late. Uh, I just think with the training camp and actually flowing into a season, I, I'm looking for him to be better than he was. And, and he'd obviously be reading the press and this and that, and he's starting to get old and all that. But look, they are they are an aging roster, which is a concern. Um, but with the aging roster, they have championship pedigree. They've, they've 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 won big games. They've got that experience of ups and downs. They should win some games uh, this season. Middleton's back to being healthy. Uh, and they've got a top five MVP candidate on their roster. So when you have, have factor all that in, uh, they should be somewhere in the mix. Um, can Doc Rivers coach his way out of a out of a paper bag, <laughs> out of a out of a first round exit? You know that's the issue. Um, you know, can he can he get this team to? We know they're probably a first second round, but can he get them to exceed their potential? They've probably got one last run in them. Maybe um, this is probably the season. Brooks getting no younger. You know, Giannis frustrations might start. Relatively soon, Dame's getting older. Middleton injury history getting older. They have talent on the roster. They're not they're not overly deep. I don't know what your thoughts are there. They're not they're not super deep. I like Gary Trent Jr. as an acquisition, cheap acquisition for him. Gives them a gunner, play the two three spot, can really score it in bunches. Um, I don't I'd almost in their depth chart they've got him as starting, but I'd almost bring him off the bench. I don't think you're starting with Lillard and Middleton and Giannis and Brook. I think you bring in a role player at that two spot, maybe Connaughton or, or something like that. Um, and let Gary Gunn off the bench, but they're not super deep. Um, Torian Prince, Bobby Portis is probably the extent of it. Dion Wright is the backup point at the moment, and then then you've got a bunch of young development guys that might fall into some minutes pro. But uh, they'll they'll be they'll be competitive. They'll win some games. Can they get to a conference finals? I I doubt it. But uh, I'm looking for maybe Doc to be that differentiator and, and actually have them exceed where they're supposed to be. Yeah, folks, I think they're going to struggle, in my opinion. Um, Where'd you have them? I am an eight. I, I think that they're okay. going to really struggle, in my opinion. I think defensively, they're still not where they need to be. Um, I, I think that Gary Trent's been an inconsistent player in the last couple of years. You know, the last you know, last year is very inconsistent. You know, hopefully he can be he could you know just sort of snap out of that just a little bit. He shot the ball decently, but you know, it's a cheap he's cheap need... one though. I think two and a half mil. No, so it's no a low doubt, risk, hey, yeah. no yeah. doubt about it. Uh, no doubt about that. And then Middleton, look, you know, I don't have a crystal ball like anybody else does, but I think with his injury issues the last couple of years, it's going to be a problem. Um, you know, guys getting older, he's not getting any younger. He's dealing with some, he dealt with some big time knee issues in the last couple of years. It's been tough. You know, Giannis is going to have to make shots. He's going to have to get better as a free throw shooter. Uh, the three point shot, they, I don't really care about that 27%, but he can't be shooting 65%. He has to line 12 times a game. They're going to wrap him up. They're going to force him to make shots. He's got to have to bring that under control, in my opinion. Um, I, I just worry about this team defensively. Lopez is the best, probably one of the best rim protectors in the game besides Victor, and you know that's going to be great. But like one through, you know, one through three, they don't really have a defensive presence there, and that's going to be a problem. I think, like I, I agree with you. I think Dave's going to play better, but um, I just think they're going to struggle. They're not very deep. They don't really have a lot of scoring. You know, Portis, you know, Portis is going to have those nights where he scores 20, 22, 23. But, you know, if they deal with any type of injuries and they got to, you know, that that really small rotation is going to have to really, you know, play well. You know, Connaughton, you know, he's a solid, you know, solid role player. But him and Torian Prince have been re- pretty much inconsistent. They are good players. They, they've they been around a lot, a long time. DeLon Wright, too. But. You know, they got to stay healthy, man. It's going to be tough. I just think defensively they're going to struggle. The East has gotten a lot better, and I think they're going to have battles every night where, like, if this was a year or two ago, maybe they can get to that, you know, get get to the top four, top five spot. I just don't think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be tough for them. You know, but Giannis has got to have to make a, a, I've been saying this since they won the cha- even their championship year in the, on the show. He's got to have to really take that free throw to the next level. 
Three-point shooting is going to be up and down. They don't need him to make threes. They've got guys that can make threes. They get Dame, they get Trent, they get Middleton. Even Lopez can make threes. Right? But they need him to make free throws because teams are going to center in on that, force him, you know, they're going to build a wall against him. They're just going to wrap him up, and they're going to force him to get to the line. And if he can't make it, there's going to be a ton of close games, and it's not going to be great for them. I expect them to sort of be on that 7, 8, you know, anywhere from 6 to 8, but I have them at the 8 spot. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, they were, they were a tough one. I just I just give them a bit of credit for the veterans they have. They should etch out something, but I I think it's it's at that it's at that teetering point of Giannis, and and, and where does where does he go with the Bucks organization moving forward? I think this season is going to depend a lot upon that. If if they're competitive in the three, four, five, six, I think it'll be okay. If they're where you picked them, and there's some frustration, they're out in straight sets in that plane. You know, look to look to see some trade rumors start brewing there, and, and, and seeing where he can end up. Uh, seven, I had Orlando, so we've I've, we've done Orlando. Who, who do you have at seven? I've got the Miami Heat at seven. Um, okay, I got my I got Miami at eight, so that works perfectly. Mm-hmm. Um, disappointing last season. Uh, seems like there started to be some days of our lives dramas constantly. You know, hovering around this team a little bit. I think it's the Jimmy Butler factor. Hero, you got a bit of bit of argy bargy there. We know um, Miami run a pretty pretty tight ship with the way they go about things. Then the, the Riley comments with Butler back and forth. I tread cautiously to pick against Spo because he does such a phenomenal job. I think he's a very very good coach, and we've spoken about that at length on this podcast. I think he's a very very good coach, but I, I don't know about this roster. The, the Rogier acquisition did not work last season. Um, when you put that with Hero and Butler, it just I don't know. It was clunky for whatever reason. It didn't didn't create what we both thought thought it would give them a little bit of a a little bit of a boost or a pick me up of that trade period to try to maybe get them get them to make a nice playoff push. It didn't do that. Uh, they're high on Jovic. They, you know, well reports they're really high on the way he's going. Um, Juarez Junior has done a, done a phenomenal job for them. I think he's going to play 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 mass minutes, but. The death chart at the moment: Rogier, Hero, Butler, Jovic, Adebayo as a starters. Maybe Juarez will take that four spot. And then it's, you know, there's not a lot there after that. Um, Alec Burks is their backup point at the moment. Uh, Josh Richardson, um, Kevin Love's re-signed, obviously. He's on that roster. And Duncan Robinson. So, you know, Haywood Highsmith still on the fringe of, of being a role player. Thomas Bryant's still there. But the, it's not a very deep roster pro. And, and this team has had huge injury issues. Jimmy's going to miss 20 games, uh, roughly. Uh, it's kind of been his, his average per season. Uh, Hero hasn't been healthy for what it seems like an eternity uh, over the last couple of years. If healthy, yes, but I think this is a somewhat a Philly esque pick for me, and, and that's why I had them down to, to eight. Was I just can't rely on their health, and it just seems like something's amiss in Miami for me, to me. Yeah, I mean, obviously they've had their they they were a down season last year for sure. I, I think the Rogier um, acquisition was tough because he went from a situation where it was just jacking up shots in Charlotte, you know, to actually running things and um, having a situation where you have to be more efficient and sort of play the system in, in, in Miami. Um, I think he really struggled with that. Now you have a whole offseason, you have a whole training camp. I, I expect him to be a lot better. Like last year was, you know, 25, you know, 20 points, six rebounds, four rebounds and about 5.6 assists. Like he was good. You know he was he was good most of the year until he until until the trade. I think they're going to be better. Obviously, Spolster is going to you know put him in, in a good position. You know, hopefully, if, if Butler could stay healthy, like you said, I mean, so, sometimes he could pencil in twenty games, fifteen, twenty games, especially with his age, you know, coming up. But if 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 injury is not really a factor, I think that this team's not bad. It, you know, I'm a big Bam Adebayo fan, um, but not very deep. You know, they've been saying Jovic is going to bust out for the last few years. You know, it's just one of those things, you know, but he's going to have to play a lot. He's going to probably have to play more than 20 minutes a night. You know, Kevin Love, can he hold up? There, there's some issue. you know, there's some questions there for sure. But look, they're a team that's tough. They they grind things out. Um, they If Hero could stay healthy and Butler could stay relatively healthy, they've got shooting, they've got they've got toughness, they've got, you know, defensive guy to anchor it with out of bio and Butler, you know, Butler plays well on that, you know, off the bench with Duncan Robertson shooting, you know, Alec Burks is going to be a, a big factor coming off the bench as a, you know, their backup point. So it'll be interesting. I, you know, they're, they're in a tough spot right now because they're going to have to start thinking about the next couple of years. I don't really worry about 
you know, the Riley Butler thing. I mean, at the end of the season or during the off season, there's always some type of thing, you know, especially with Butler. I think that, that they'll zip it up. They'll figure things out. I don't think they can make a run in the playoffs in the regular season, but I think they could, you know, they could battle for a playing spot. Yeah, but you just, you just don't see a lot of that in Miami. You don't usually see the off-court stuff hovering too much around Miami. They do a pretty good job of that historically, I think. Just to, But since Jimmy's been there, there has been some issues and some dramas and it just seems like it, it, it can constantly is a talking point. Uh, eight, you had Milwaukee, so we'll move on from there. Nine, this is where we get interesting. Uh, nine through 15 is a dumpster fire uh, at the best of times. It is not not pretty. I've got a flyer at nine. Interested to hear who you have at nine. I guess Chicago, Chicago Bulls. Oh well, I had them. I I, I gave them a late cut to eleven. Um, let's touch on them. Uh, I, I I had them in, uh, but then I I don't know. I just there's a lot of people that are very low on the Bulls, even lower than we are. I have them at eleven. You had them at nine. Um, I think in the rubbish heap that is the bottom six, they'll, they'll be competitive. Giddy will have the ball in his hands. I think Levine also need, kind of needs to play well to get out of there, to be honest with you. I think he needs to – I know he's on a huge contract and whatnot. How long has he got left of that? Is this his final year or second final year? I'm not sure. So, um, so Levine, right – I mean, uh, Zach right now, he's got, up to my knowledge, he's got $43 million this year, $46 million in 25-26. Player option, I believe, for about forty nine million coming well, in twenty six, yeah, twenty seven. It's beautiful. Put up thirty and twenty to get out of there. Then <laughs> beautiful fucking country you live in. You could you could buy a lot of fucking pizza in Chicago with that. Let me tell you. Yeah, but I, I think surely you know with all the all the rumblings around him and he comes out and tries to have a good year, and I think Vooch is a professional, plays well, plays hard. He'll get some easy looks from his point guard. I mean, uh, White can score in bunches. I, I don't think they'll be great. I just think they'll be better than the far bottom of the East. Um, I did have them in the Plains, but then I, I kind of scratched it late because I put in um, a flyer. But give me give me your thoughts on Chicago real quick at nine. I mean, Chicago, look, you know, they lose DeRozan, so that's a big chunk of things. Um, you're going to have to, you know, Zach Levine right now, it's going to cost you probably multiple picks to get him, to get him <laughs> off your roster to, to somebody else. I think that... There aren't many people that's going to want to pay forty plus million in their cap to to take them, you know. I think it's going to cost you. I think it's going to cost the Bulls a little bit to you know a lot coming out the door. Um, I, obviously, I'm a big Giddy fan, and you know he's he's a good player and, and a solid point guard. And you got Kobe White, you know Lonzo Ball is starting to play a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how his knee holds up. Um, they they drafted Bozellis, who's a Lithuanian kid out of. Um, you know, out of the G League Ignite program, he's going to be, you know, someone they're going to try to develop. They're going to try to play. So I don't really think they care if Levine shuts it down or not. I think they like if he does, they're going to play Buzelis and then go for the, you know, Cooper flag sweepstakes. I think right now they just have a not, too much collective talent to really get in there. Unless Levine shuts it down, I don't think they're going to really trade him. You know, Kobe White, they'll probably hold on to. Giddy, they'll probably hold on to. You know, Vooch, you know, you know, Vooch will probably have some trade value. But um, I think everybody that's sort of below that eight and eight spot or so is in the Cooper flag sweepstakes. And if they have any, you know, sort of, you know, green light to to tank, they'll do it. But right now, with if, if everything's the same and they're going to play minutes and they're going to play 65 games or so each, I think that the Bulls are probably good at this spot. Just because, uh, you know, they got talent. Like Levine, I'm not a huge Levine fan, but he could score. You know, Kobe White could score. You know, I'm not a big Patrick Williams fan. He's a very underachieving player, but Vooch is a pro. He's going to do his thing. I don't know if Alonzo Ball is going to stay healthy. Uh, they got AO is okay. Buzelis is going to play minutes, Jalen Smith. But, yeah, I don't expect much. I mean, they've been they've been killing this team on fucking social media, Bogues. Like, the dancing in media day. You know, um, I, I saw one today where, like, they had, like, Patrick Williams, um, uh, the AO kid, and then uh, the Bazellas kid on, like, in front of a program or something. And they said, these guys look like actors playing the Chicago Bulls. So, I mean, they've been destroying these guys. Um, I like Billy Donovan. I think he's a really good coach, you know, but I think that there's there's rumblings of an issue there, and I think they're, they're going to try to – 
they're probably going to try to, you know, get this roster gone, most of these guys. But I just, again, the value part and what you have to latch on to some of these guys to get them off your roster is going to be an issue. I had Detroit at nine. Uh, I'm just going for wow. a flyer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just had, uh, I, I just think that they should be slightly, slightly better than last season, which was really bad. But mm-hmm. clean slate, JB Bickerstaff and, and Langdon now in the reins there. Um, I think more growth from Cunningham will be, will be needed. Uh, Ivy was in and out last season. Um, but Harris, Fontecchio, Hardaway Jr., Malik Beasley, I don't think they're superstars, but I think they're solid veteran guys that can shoot the shit out of the ball, a few of them. Um, I mean, Hardaway's had a pretty poor couple of seasons, so I'm looking for him to bounce back to at least an average of what he was. Uh, Harris, solid uh, acquisition. You know, he's just not – I just don't think he was ever a superstar player. I think he's a good good role player, um, good good 4-5 or five on your roster. Fontecchio can shoot it and Malik Beasley can shoot it. So I think they got some shooting. Jaden Ivey should take another step forward. They're young. Um I just hope with with a new coach and everything that maybe they put together a little run to start the season and start off well and maybe they scrape a a playing spot. But I just I just decided to go with the flyer with this young team. I just don't I don't have them towards the bottom of bottom two or three. I think there's some much worse rosters in this league, and I think they've got enough young talent to hopefully win some games. Yeah, Bogues. I think that the management's probably going to you know find you know they're going to find them for every win they have. I think they're in total tank mode. I think they want to <laughs> get better, no doubt about it, but. I mean, they're at a point where their roster is a fucking joke, and they're gonna need to they get they're gonna need Cooper Flag or one of those guys in the top two. I don't think that you know it's gonna be them in Washington competing to see who could you know who could have the biggest dumpster fire as far as wins concerned. And but I just think that they need they need as much talent as possible and acquire it. They're not gonna get it. Nobody wants to go there right now. You know, nobody wants to be in Detroit. It is what it is. Um, I think they would be better on paper for sure. Cunningham, you know, coming off injury, you know, if, 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 you know, he was big time hurt last year and, and things and I, him and Ivy and Harris, don't doubt about it. They're going to be gunning for sure. But I just don't think, you know, I think defensively, they're not very good. I think that they, they do score. They have shooting. Uh, I'm a big Fontecchio, Fontecchio fan. Um, you know, uh, you know, he could. Sh- That's not a pasta pro. It's a player. You know, it's a, it's a player. Not oh a pasta. man, I wish it was. Yeah, he, he's a fellow. He's a fellow Italian. So yeah, you know, I'm rooting for him, of course. <laughs> but you know, I think that yeah, they're gonna need to acquire talent. And look, Tobias Harris is like a good guy who could jack up shots to get points. I think Cunningham's. A, you know, he's a future All Star. He's a he's a player that that could be a multiple year All Star for them. But they need. They need to lose games, and they need to just, you know, I love Bickerstaff, and he's not a guy that's that's going to want to lose. But like as far as the organization going forward, this roster isn't just isn't really going to resemble winning or, or something going forward that you can win with. So I think that they're going to be in the Cooper Flag sweepstakes, and they're going to lose, and they're going to lose a lot. I, I think I had him at like fourteen. Hold on, let me just make sure I had him where I had him at. I had them right now at. Yeah, 14, 19 wins for the year. I, you know, I, I just, you know, for them, like, what, what's the, what's going to be the use to get to the like the nine or ten spot? Yeah, you're going to have what? Well, that's, that's all the teams, though, right? But that's, that's basically everything nine and below, yeah. though. So it's, it's, I think it's hard to call it away because they're all, they're all basically in the sweepstakes, right? Like you, you're, yeah. you're in that death, yeah, death spiral of maybe we get a nine or a ten seed. And then we're out in straight sets. We lose pick mm-hmm. pick uh, coverage, right? So it's kind of like fuck. Like it's just it, I just wanted to take a flyer. I know like you said, it's, it's tough, folks. I, it's tough. It's, it's but, t- but I purposely did did a random one that probably will make me look like a fucking idiot. But um, I had them at eleven and then flipped it with Chicago. To be honest with you, but uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just it's so hard because we'll get to, to Brooklyn. But I mean, some of them don't even have their pick. So you're like, fuck, what are they going to do? But but anyway, um, so you had them at thirteen. Um, I had them. I had them at fourteen. Actually, 14. okay, even worse. Um, yeah, Wait, who'd you add at ten, folks? Ten, I had Atlanta. Atlanta. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, so I mean, they're stuck in the. <laughs> do we rebuild or keep building around Trey era? Uh, I think they're still trying to figure yeah. out which way they go on that. They're at best a playing team. Jalen Johnson finished the season well last season. Uh, towards the end, sixteen and nine for the year. Uh, fellow Australian Dyson. I mean, it should be a better year for him. 
And he's probably really their only super elite ball stopper on that team. So I think he's going to find find big minutes. They'll be okay. They're not going to be horrible. Um, if Trey's healthy, they'll, they'll win some games. He'll win them some games off his own bat. Veteran sitter in Capella. They've got an okay okay roster, but they're, they're just they're, they're in playing realm. So I don't I don't see anything better than that. Anything worse than that? I think they're a perfect perfectly built playing team, pro. Yeah, I mean Trey and Bogdanovich are going to be the guys, you know, for them and. You know, like Jalen Johnson and, and DeAndre Hunter played okay last year. They're they're just sort of, you know, vigilante scorers, I guess you're going to call them, and, and guys that could put up numbers. You know, Capella is going to anchor the defense. But, yeah, there's really not a lot to be excited about. You know, Trey Young, you know, I don't – I think if I was there, if I was their GM, he'd probably be the last year he's there. No offense to him. It's just, look, he's been there for a while. It just really hasn't, you know, it hasn't – they had that one playoff, you know, they had that one little playoff run. I get it. But I think that he's got he's got some value to some teams if, if you were going to trade him and just sort of – I think they're in rebuild mode. And, you know, but then again, you know, you get him off the team, then, you know, whatever dwindling, a, 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 you know, attendance you're going to have there is going to, like, skyrocket on the, on the negative side. So – I don't know. Maybe you do keep him, but I just think you get multiple picks for him, and you can get you can get some assets for you know for him going forward. I just don't think this, like you said, this team is built perfectly, perfectly for for the plan. Um, I just don't see them really. You know, maybe they they're better than Chicago, and maybe they can you know they can get up to you know get up to nine or eight or whatever. You know, they get up to eight or so. But I think it's going to be tough for them, folks. I just don't think they have enough and. You know, I think this roster shot. To be honest with you, I think they gotta, you know, they got a new front office. I think they're they gotta start moving people. And you know, again, another team that can go into the Cooper Flag sweepstakes or or just, you know, like just reset. I think they gotta they gotta do a whole r- roster rehaul. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. They're stuck in free fall. Eleven. I had Chicago. Who's your eleven? Um, who do I have I'm eleven? Toronto. Votes. Hold on. Season. I had the Charlotte Hornets at eleven. What? Yeah, I had the Charlotte Hornets. Now, hey, look. Yes, your I can boys give you shit Fan- on that one. You can give me shit on Detroit. Okay. Your boys <laughs> at FanDuel had them at like twenty eight and a half wins, so I have them right around there. But here's my thing with them: they're a dumpster fire on top of a fucking dumpster fire. But if they're healthy, you got Ball. Brandon Miller is going to be better. You got Josh Green on the roster. You got Grant Williams on the roster. I'm not a huge Grant Williams fan, but you know, he reminds me of Eeyore from fucking Winnie the Pooh. But you got those guys. You got Mark Williams. You got, you know, so you got you got guys who could score, put up points, put up numbers. Um, it'll be interesting what they do with that with that team. I like Misich, Misich um, coming Misich, off the bench. Yeah. You know, for them, they got Cody Martin. You know, Nick Richards is okay. I think they'll be better than last year. I think look, I I I would not want you know Lamelo Ball on my roster. Just not. I'm not a huge Lamelo Ball fan. But the guy does some electric things, puts up points. I think Brandon Miller is going to be better. You know, he had a decent rookie campaign last year. I think he's going to continue to get better. Maybe Josh Green gets you know better in the consistent starting role. Who knows? But I think if they stay healthy. They're not really trying to win games. They're they're probably trying to, you know, be in Cooper flag mode. But I think that, uh, you know, I think that they're they're better than some of the other teams below them. Yeah, I had them in thirteen. Twenty um, eighth in offense last season. Twenty ninth in defense last season. It's a pretty pretty bad formula. Uh, they have some exciting players. I've said that the last couple of seasons. They're they're probably the, they'll be the most fun bottom five team to watch out of the five teams because they've got some exciting some, some exciting guys that can get up and down, um, you know, bridges and, and ball and all that kind of stuff. I think a lot depends on how how much growth we see from Brandon Miller for how how well mm-hmm. they do. But, yeah, I just see them at 13. I don't, I don't see them as very good. I don't, I don't see their roster as as being very good. They're, they're, they're okay. They'll be solid. They'll be competitive at times at stretches, but they'll also, they're one of those teams that could pull off a five game win streak and then go on a 13 game losing streak. Like they just, there's no, and then what are they? What do they do? What, what are they, you know, if you're 28th in offense and 29th in defense, it's like, fuck, what, look, what's our ethos? <laughs> are we guarding or are we scoring? Well, we're, we're shit at both. So we've got to figure something. Maybe we'll just be good rebounders. I don't know, but uh, they got to figure something out there. So not, not, not high on them, but um, 13, I hope you had Toronto, but I got 
I've got Toronto yeah, at 12, so I guess we flip-flop those. I think they'll battle. I think um, their home court helps a little bit. It's a nightmare going to, going to Toronto, for those that don't know. It's, a, it's you know, NBA players are pampered with, with getting off planes right on the tarmac, on your bus, hotel, saves you two or three hours. When you go to Canada, it's a shit show. It's snowing outside. You got to get off on the tarmac. You got to get your suitcases and you got to go through customs. Everything takes, two, you know, probably two hours longer. And then it's a long ass trip to to the city there, so I think that helps them with their home court. It definitely does. It's a very good city to go out in as well uh, for the, the partiers. So they they usually have a good time in Toronto. Um, uh, you know, Scotty Barnes took a big step last season numbers wise. Can he continue that? I mean, he was bro. He was twenty points a night with eight rebounds, six assists, one and a half blocks, one point three steals, forty seven percent from the field, and and thirty four from three. So he had. A really good year. Look for his hopefully his percentages to go up a little bit, get to fifty percent and maybe thirty six, thirty seven from three. But near triple double line every night. Uh, they got a crazy Euro coach, so maybe he gets more out of them. But I think they'll be okay. Um, but they'll have them. I have them in twelve still, pro. It's gonna be tough, Bogues, with them. I had them. I had them the same. Um, I thought quickly played you know well for them last year. Uh, they're expecting a lot of things out of Grady Dick. You know, um, high draft pick from last year's draft. Uh, RJ Barrett played, you know, played, in, you know, up and down. Scotty Barnes, like you said, had a great year. I like Jacob Podol. You know, he plays, he plays hard at the center spot. You know, short roll guy, great floater, rebounds, sets, sets you know, set screens. Uh, coming off the bench, they're just okay. Lennox, you know, Lennox and, and Bruce Brown, Davion Mitchell's just inconsistent. Um, their rookie Jacoby Wa- uh, Walter will be interesting to watch. I just don't again. I think if you're anywhere near that Mendoza line of like, you know, 30 wins or 28 wins, you're like, you know what? In March, let's just uh, start tanking the fucking shit out of it. Let's just watch, you know, watch, watch the Titanic every fucking day and, you know, watch Leonardo fucking fall off that door and just fucking just tank the shit out of it because who the fuck wants to win games? You know, who the fuck wants to win games when you're there? You got to get acquired talent. And the only way you're going to do that is you're going to get in the top two or top three. And the only way you're going to do that is tank, tank the fuck out of it. I, Especially like, look, they got a couple yeah, three agency. Yeah. They got a couple of good players, though. I mean, look, they'll, they'll be okay. I just don't think they're deep enough. And I think they just want to lose games and, and, and grab, grab the draft and see, you know, to see if they're going to get one of those, you know, two or three guys. Begs the question of who's the biggest free agent signing the Toronto have ever had, biggest name, mm. and the fact the fact that we can't even name one quickly tells you everything you need to know. They just they just yeah. cannot get get unrestricted free agents. Just do not go there. Uh, period. Um, it's generally guys they've drafted Vince Carter, Chris Bosh to turn into stars and end up leaving. They just cannot get high T-Mac. end talent. So I think they're a prime example of having to be in the Cooper flag sweepstakes just because they can acquire a star through the draft and maybe have him five or six years and then see what happens. Um, I mean, look how they won their championship. They got Kawhi because of all their young guys. They traded to San Antonio, you know, and, and then also looking Kawhi Leonard hate in San Antonio, but that who, you know, but still what a, like, what a gamble that was too. just talking about that. That was, that was one of the most well paid off gambles in NBA history. In my opinion, they took a guy that was, had injury, a massive injury history with that knee, uh, was kind of falling apart. They bring him in, they nurse him through, they s- somehow steal a championship, and then they know he's going to leave. <laughs> They're like, all right, see ya, we got our chip. And, you know, they got – it was a ticking time bomb. They kind of kind of got moved on in, as well as you could after a year of having him because he hasn't been healthy really since. So that was mm. just a segue. Like they, they – man, that that looking back at that, that's a – that's a uh, ESPN documentary one day, the way they pulled that shit off, because that worked out. Masai, yeah, yeah. Masai, Masai did a Could've great job of that. Right? Could have went the other way. Like, you know, he gets yeah. there, his knees messed up, and they, they're they just back in purgatory, but they, they end up stealing a championship and gives the fans some life there, which is just a sensational sensational couple of years there in Toronto. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about him shutting it down when he got there too, like just exactly, not yeah. wanting to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they, they got a lot out of it. And look, they traded him. Reward. Yeah. yeah, they he leaves, then you uh you Larry. basically trade Siakam for like nothing. I mean, I, I don't think they I think Bruce Brown might be was Bruce Brown the only guy they have left on that uh off that trade to Indiana. Like, you know, they got those guys off their roster pretty quick. They don't really have a lot to show for it except hey, look, they got the quickly deal, you know, they got they got quickly and RJ Barrett and 
They got a ring. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. I mean, it's a franchise that hasn't had one. So just, yeah, just looking back at that, like big balls move that worked out. Um, okay, 14, I got Brooklyn. Going to be bad, obviously. Uh, I think Ben needs a consistent injury for a year. He's coming to free agency. Uh, so he's he's at that, I don't know, Pro, how you feel about it, but he's at that point where it's it's looking like you need to show that you can pl- have a healthy season or you're in that vet min territory um after this season you know um it's a bit extreme but you got you got to show potential teams that you can still play and maybe pipe another cut, small small short-term deal for you know the, the way money's been thrown around but they once they label you and then you're that vet min guy it's hard it's hard to steer, steer it back um and 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 as we spoke about earlier most of their picks are gone right pro so you know they're bad and they're they're trying to blow it up and rebuild i uh, actually saw Sean Marks uh, during the the NBL preseason tournament, and they, they, you know, kind of mentioned that they're they're in full blow up mode, but it's like they're not going to really reap the benefits of full blow up mode because some of their picks are gone. Yeah, I mean they're 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 an interesting one. I think I think Ben Simmons' his career is done. I think it's just it reminds me a lot of my done done in the sense that he's not going to look. He's he's going to be what you said he is. He's going to be minimum a little bit more than that. It just he's like a Michael Carter Williams on steroids, you know, a guy who won the rookie of the year and just never really got it back. Ben had a a good run of what like four years, five years maybe, and then that was it. He just I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna try to I'm not gonna try to say that I know what it is, but I know what he isn't, and he's not a guy that you could really, you know, depend on to to put up points and put up numbers and help you win in the NBA anymore. It is what it is. And, you know, we just move on. It's not, he's stealing money. None of that. Look, there's a lot of players that signed big contracts that just sort of didn't have it by the end of the contract and he doesn't have it anymore. He's just, it is what it is. Let's just move on from him. The the team as, as a whole, look, they have a couple of, they have a couple of guys that have value. I think Cam Johnson has got value. I think, Cam Thomas has value. I heard they're shopping Dorian Finney-Smith, but they want multiple picks for him. Um, you know, Nick Claxton's okay. But look, they're just a team. Bogdanovich, they've got, I don't know what he's got left or what he doesn't have left. But look, they're not. They're a team not looking to win. They've Now, they got a bunch of their picks with the Bridges trade, though, right? If I'm not mistaken, or no? Trent, you got something? Yeah, so Brooklyn Nets in June acquired their 2025 first-round draft pick, negating a previously agreed-to swap and their first-round pick in 2026 from the Houston Rockets. Okay, so they got a couple of picks That's left. That's it, though? Yeah, so 25 and 26, they got both those first-round picks back. back but okay. after that, I'm pretty sure it's, pretty, yeah, it's that, pretty right. bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think, yeah. you know, well, Cam Thomas could put up points. I think that those guys are guys that, are, you know, that you figure in on trading – uh, Dennis Schroeder won't be there long. You know, uh, I just don't think Ben just sort of has it. There's always going to be an excuse or you know this or that, and we're just going to go through the cycle that we always go through. We're going to go through. He doesn't finish the season, then he's going to be in a wife beater, making shots. And, you know, AI or not, who knows? In the summertime, then oh, Ben's back. You know, Ben's back, and then. You know, 22 games into it, he shuts it down and this and that and all this. So, I was really hoping for a, for an Instagramless off season. I really was. Like, I just think he just needed to lock down and just disappear and get in the gym. And I think he's in the gym working hard, but I, just, I was just hoping not to put that pressure on. He puts the pressure on himself too, to an extent. Like, when you release those kind of videos, um, these conversations start again, right? And everyone's kind of shitting on you or not, or they're with you or they're not. I hope he does well. I hope he, no one. You love to see bounce no back stories, but like you said, we're, we're we're creatures of habit, and we've seen this story. It's not this personal. Is what, third, fourth, like I'm not like Kendrick Perkins here, or yeah. or any of these guys who are just trying to make a name by like bashing the kid. I, it's not about bashing. It's about look. You've been around the game, you know, thirty years. I've been around the game thirty years. Look, it is what it is. We've seen it a thousand times. And a player like that, it's just mentally, physically, it's just it just doesn't. It's just not going to happen right now. Like, look, in a perfect world, which the perfect world never exists in the NBA, he locks himself with a shooting coach all offseason, gets his shot right. It's not it's not pathetic in the, to that sense. If you hire the right guy, they can help him out. And that's, in my opinion, that's what he needs to do. But they never do it. They've got millions of dollars. They've got all this free time. But they never do the right thing. 
They hire some fucking jerk off with his hat on backwards, putting him through 27 dribble fucking moves that he'll never want to do. He'll never do in a game. And then come the season, he'll shoot 26% from the fucking line, 11% from three. And they're like, wow, you know, you know we're going to have a great off season with, with Ben. No, get yourself a fucking shooting coach. Dave Hopla is a guy in Florida. Look him up. Like a guy like that, just fucking pay him whatever he wants. Give him a, go to Dave Hopla's house. Go to with a publisher's clearinghouse check that's like 30 feet long with a fucking clown pen. Fill out any amount that he wants and then fucking fix your shot. And that's it. If you fix your shot, a lot of things happen. Yeah, but how much do you think of pro? Do you think it's all technique with him though? I know the technique's not great, but do you think... Technique for... It's, got, it's, it's first crossed. technique. And then again, it's mental. But if you get... That's what I'm saying. But what ratio mental, mental to technique? I, I think it's more mental than technique. Because like his shot was his shot's been the same since college, but at uh, least in college, no, it's it's drastically he, different. Huh? If you watch tape, yeah, Is if it? you watch tape of his shot, his elbow was always kind of on that angle, not though, right? that Even bad. If you watch his film from not only LSU, well, he only played like six games at LSU, but if you watch his like that first summer league, right? I think I don't know if you were the one who showed me the film. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, he shot it different. It was sort of like the Giannis thing where you just shot a – in my opinion, you shot it completely different. And then he just – whatever happened, happened. And then it's just – it just went to shit. It's totally mental, but look, you get him in a gym and you just shoot and you shoot and you shoot and you correct it. Like all summer. Look, he'll – you know, he'll be – He'll by April fourth he'll be have his locker cleared out there, so it doesn't matter. So by like if he if he just gets on it from April sixth to like uh, to September fifteenth, he can make a drastic difference if he hires the right type of shooting coach. And then that's the first step. Mm. And then the mental thing he's gonna have to have the nuts to fucking shoot in games, you know, and and deal with one for nine or one for ten and reel this thing in. But he hasn't made any tweak to his shot. That, that had any benefit to him for the last five years. And that's a problem. So, I mean, I don't want to yeah. spend fucking more than 38 seconds talking about Ben Simmons, but we always do. You know, I feel bad. <laughs> well, it's a stra- the strange yeah, slant. I, I hope he does too. well. Bounce, I hope he kind of bounces back to a half-capable player where he's consistently contributing and, and then hopefully plays for the national mm-hmm. team one day. But this conversation is one that we have on on a on a on a rotary, right? Like we need to you need, you need to see it. And you, I don't, you know, this podcast or you and I, this isn't no to shit on anyone or the same person you know, to get down. I want him to do mm. well, but it's it's. I just hope this off season. I was like, just don't post a video of you shooting jumpers, you know, off season playing five and five. Just please don't do that because it's just like. It brings on all the negativity of people like, here we fucking yeah. go again. This dude, you know what I mean? And just, it's, it's just like, just don't do that. Just, just disappear. Like you said, get a shooting coach, get in the gym, do your work, disappear, come back. And then, and then the expectation is not set that you've been shooting in the gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like no one, but I think it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do these days. With social no media doubt. And whatnot. I think um, it's just one of those things, but let's move on. Last lucky last for both of us, I'd assume would be Washington. Uh, look, if your top two guys are Kuzma and Paul, no offense to them, I just I just think you're gonna struggle to win. Um, I think both guys are complementary stars. So this is a knock on them. I just don't think if they're your one and two or two and one, however you want to word it, you're just not gonna win a lot of games. That they're volume scorers at times, but they're streaky. Um, we saw Paul not dealing very well with being that guy last season, uh, for getting plays, shooting out of timeouts, all kinds of whack shit that we spoke about last season. They they're gonna be bad. Uh, they're not going to be fun to watch. They're going to, I think they have one of those cores that will give up easily when things don't go well. Valentunas, I have no idea why they made that move. I don't, I don't know. I mean, a bit of toughness and size and no nonsense about him, maybe. But I mean, I just wonder to how, how far into the season he gets frustrated by not getting a post touch for 18 straight minutes because he's watching Paul pull up from 40 and, and Ku shoot quick transition three. So. I am excited to see how Alex Sarr goes. I will say that NBL next uh, former Perth Wildcat. I think he has some. He has potential to be a very good player. Um, prior, to, I don't know if you saw a lot of his games, but he he just I like next stars that come to the NBL and play the right way. Uh, so they come with all this hype. They're going to be a draft pick, and there's some that come and try to press and overdo things because they're supposed to be the next star and. He came and just played his role, played off the bench, didn't complain, blocked shots, rebounded, made tough shots, can shoot the three ball. 
So I'm excited to see how he goes in in that dumpster fire of a, of, of a roster. Um, but I think he he's you know um, long gets a lot of deflections. So I'm looking forward to seeing him pro. But they're they're going to be a, a shit show. Yeah, I mean, look, they they've got a they've got a situation where, in my opinion, this team isn't about. Jordan Poole, it's not about Kyle Kuzma. It's about Alex Saar. It's about Bilal Koulibaly, you know, and developing those three guys and then getting getting Cooper Flagg. I think that, that those are the three things that they really need to do. You know, they need to, you know, focus mostly on those three guys, Saar, Koulibaly, and getting Cooper Flagg. You know, obviously the Cooper Flagg thing is out of their control, but those are the two guys they need to develop. Uh, you can't trade your Jordan Poole, in my opinion. I just think it will cost you a lot to get out the door. Uh, Kuzma, you know, you don't really need to trade those guys, but it's just like, look, what are you doing? You, you, if you want to play the right way, if you want to play, you know, with guys that are just hard charging, young, you're trying to develop those guys that you drafted or, or, or put some time into. Um, I think that that's the way you go. Like you try to trade those two guys and move them on, and then just move all, all these young guys into the roster and just figure try to figure things out. I'm excited to see Alex Sar, you know, play this this season. You know, um I spent some time with Bilal Koulibaly a couple of weeks ago in DC. You know, I, you know, I think he's sort of a Trevor Ariza type of player that has, you know, has some potential to be pretty good. Um but look, you don't have like I said, you don't have to trade Pool and Kuzma, but what are you doing if you're not? Like those young guys you need to really get reps, minutes you got to develop their confidence level and, and you got to develop their game. So um, it'll be an interesting deal um, with Washington. Brian Keefe is one of the better young coaches as far as developing talent in the league. He's had a long career. I've known him for a long time as well. But, uh, yeah, they're, just, they're, they're in full Cooper flag mode, you know, trying to just, just trying to lose as many games as possible, play your young guys, get them minutes, figure things out, and just try to develop assets going forward. I should almost just do the uh, Cooper flag stakes before the season, so at least these teams can tr- somewhat try to compete. You yeah, know? <laughs> let's just get it over with just, now. Let's just do the lottery yeah. now. First date. Get it over with now, preseason, because it's it's like you said, man. It's there's just no incentive to win. You've got a generational player potentially in the in the draft, so the things just, the, the product's just going to look horrendous for that bottom half of the, of the East, which is why I think it's it's just so hard to pick. But. Uh, good man, that's our Eastern Conference uh, standings. Some crazy. Wacky shit from myself. Some not so much from you. You haven't been that crazy or wacky. I think Indiana and Detroit from the <laughs> wacky ones. But um, the West, the West will get a little bit harder, bro. The West oh will yeah, get a little bit harder, that I think, that uh, that's week. gonna be the an East, interesting East. deal for sure. Mm. Yeah, a lot going on in the West. But uh, that's it for the NBA stuff this week, pro. Appreciate it. We'll uh, we'll see you. You again got it, fellas. Week. I'll talk to you.